Bula Vinaka and welcome to yet another interesting episode of FE News, FE New Pulse, your video podcast that brings you the best of the best from our academics as well as our students. And today in the studio with us, we have a very interesting individual. Not just interesting because he has some great stuff to tell us, but because he's also an avid writer, so you must know of him as well. So without further ado, we'll ask Mr. Mayur to please Hello. introduce himself. <laughs> should, or should I say Bula? <laughs> yes, that's better. Yandra. Yes. Uh, yes, if you want me to introduce myself, uh, I'd like to. Uh, firstly, uh, Bula to you, a namaskaram to you, hello to you. And uh, I'm really happy to be here because through this, I'm able to connect with so many uh, people uh, in Fiji, uh, the youngsters and the young at hearts. So I think I would introduce myself very simply speaking, um, by profession, I'm a motivational speaker, uh, comma, I'm also uh, a corporate trainer, a lecturer, um, and also a leadership coach for for uh, personal coaching, one to one. That's by profession, uh, but by passion, <laughs> I'm a I'm a writer. I'm an author. Uh, I started writing poems. In fact, so I'm a poet. I've got two books uh, out uh, as poetry books. And I also uh, must surprise you by saying I started writing prose. That's actual books yeah. of prose. Uh, and my first book I started writing when I was in Fiji. Wow. In Suva. So Fiji is like so special to you. Yeah. So I, I started writing the book here. Because, and, and I owe it to Fiji because you will be again pleasantly surprised that uh, I was not keen on writing because I would just love to write poems, you know, rhymes and stuff. And uh, there's this wonderful friend of mine who also uh, works with uh, Fiji Sun and she wanted to, she attended a seminar of mine and she, along with the colleagues, they told me that if you would like to write for us, we would be happy because they heard about my book, uh, the poem book, Rising yes. Waterfall is that book. I was a bit hesitant. <clears throat> and I didn't know whether to say yes or no because I'd never written prose. But because of their insistence, I started writing. And I've been writing just the flowed. columns for them. Yeah. And alongside, I started uh, my first book, Adventures of Purna. And this, as you can see, mm -hmm. is my second book, uh, right. A Ghauri and Untold Story. Um, and it's all thanks to uh, Fiji and thanks to Fiji Sun that I got that confidence to write prose. So yeah, and I do paint a bit, uh, not houses. Huh? I paint, <laughs> I paint on canvas. Um, it's it's fun. I, I just enjoy because it's a de-stressor for me. Right. Um, it's a different thing that people actually like the paintings. <laughs> I do. Um, I call them uh, spiritual abstracts. So I do abstract painting, um, and I I I I feel that everybody. I'm not being a trainer here, but I think everybody should enjoy their hobbies. You know, exactly. work is work. Work is going to be there. You're going to work probably like 10 hours a day. But if there's a weekend, steal some time and do that which you love to do. Yeah, something like that makes have, you happy. Yeah, like I have a friend in uh, Mumbai who likes to do gardening. So he works 15 hours a day. But on a Sunday morning, he needs that time to go to his garden and, you know, just probably he finds his uh, peace there. I find my peace uh, in the paintings. So... Mm. Yeah, that's what that's who I am. All right. So, Mr. Mayur, you work with our National Training and Productivity Center. Yeah. Tell us a little bit of what you do um, with FNU's NTPC. Definitely. The National Training Productivity Center, NTPC Fiji, uh, is, is a very important part of my career growth because they were the first people to invite me to Fiji. Uh, and, and what do I do for them is the same, which is my profession, which is conducting two day or a three day or a one day workshop seminars on subjects which are typically under the umbrella of soft skills. Mm. So I would do communication skills. I would do presentation skills, leadership development. So this time, for example, uh, the NTPC has invited me here to conduct transformational leadership uh, sessions. So I finished two sessions of two days each and I have another final session uh, tomorrow and day after, after which I fly back. So uh, NTPC uh, invites me regularly uh, to conduct these workshops, which are more self-developmental and leadership developmental. Mm -hmm. It's very soft skills oriented. 
very behavioral oriented right. and i think that's that's important for every individual right you right. when you work you're an engineer you're a finance guy but you need the soft skills there are people who do who very well in technical education and they rise in their organization but when it comes to becoming a manager they kind of they they lose it because they don't know what to do they suddenly are <laughs> right. given like 20 people to Got manage to shock yeah it's like a uh, they get a bit numb so the sessions i do is very interactive uh, and we obviously look at practical learnings that they can implement like people say what is delegation you know they'll open a textbook i said delegation is not opening a textbook and learning the definition of delegation. It's about doing the delegation. It's an activity. So through these sessions, uh, I believe that, uh, and because of NTPC uh, and FNU, the people who attend, they get some practical inputs on how to be a leader, how to be a transformational leader. Mm. Because they're big words, but we simplify it. So and that's overall, what just a better person in general. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I mean, yeah. I was asked by one uh, entity here in Fiji uh, before the pandemic. Um, and he was, um, I think, the owner of the business. And he said to me that, I want to know if you do something on anger management. And I, I, I didn't know what to say because I had done something like that in uh, India. So he gave me the examples and said, all I want is the people to, f to work hard, yes, but to be able to know that anger is going to hurt them. Yeah, and it's it not can the answer to everything. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I do believe that uh, training has been, uh, developmental training and stuff has been important to organizations and uh, NTPC actually brings me for that. Wow. So uh, it's so good to know all the wonderful things that you have been doing, not just with NTPC, but also with our government organizations, I believe, as yes, well. Yes, yes. And uh, we're talking today on confidence, Correct. which is so important, both for our staff and students and people in general. Yeah. Um, not confidence, not just in your workplace or in, at school, but confidence in yourself. Correct. So what does it mean to you? Well, it's a good question because uh, I have to ask this question almost every day because there are reasons to lose it very quickly as well. But I do believe that uh, confidence is... Uh, see, if you have a vehicle, uh, which probably is the fastest vehicle, you know, maybe a Ferrari, right? And you sit in the vehicle, you know how to drive the vehicle. I see you in the morning and I said, hey, I say congratulations to you. And then I come back in the afternoon and I see you in the same vehicle. You haven't moved an inch. I ask you, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why aren't you moving? And yeah. you say, there's no fuel in the car. I said, do you know how to drive? You say, of course, I'm a, I'm a race car driver. So this should be easy, but there's no fuel. That fuel is the confidence. A lot of people have other skill sets. Uh, they have enough knowledge, but the confidence is what is required for them to speak convincingly. Mm. Uh, and I think that comes through consistent and constant uh, upgradation of knowledge, not only about the technical stuff, but even about the world. Right. I believe knowledge enhances uh, confidence and confidence is the fuel for us as vehicles to progress in our career. That is absolutely right. I completely agree with you, sir. And now we'll just go into our short break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about self-doubt, something with a, which a lot of people struggle with, even yeah. I struggle with sometimes. <laughs> and we're going to talk about how our students and how people can identify self-doubt and how we can overcome them. Sure. So that is straight after the break. <laughs> Experience the future at the Fiji National University Open Day 2024. <music> Discover our wide range of programs, meet our dedicated faculty, and explore your career options. From science to arts, technology to health, FNU has something for everyone. From the 3rd to the 5th of October at selected university campuses. Dream it, weave it, and achieve it with FNU. Welcome back. We're having a very interesting conversation with Mr. Mayur about confidence. Now, before the break, we talked about all the good work that he's doing with <coughs> FNU's NTPC, but now we're going to talk a little bit about ourselves. 
myself, yourself, our students, our staff, anybody that's watching us, somehow, somewhere in our lives, we've had self-doubt. Now, Mr. Mayur, I would like to know how can we identify a self-doubt and how do we overcome it? Um, you know, this is a question that I keep getting a lot of times because as a human being, having a doubt is something that becomes part of existence because there is always going to be a point we reach where we wonder, should I or should I not? Mm. Uh, and I think from a little bit of research and uh, interactions I've had, I've understood that being sure is the opposite of having a doubt. Um, and so, for example, if there is a situation in front of you, understanding the situation, studying the situation, getting to know the pros and the cons of, this, of the situation, the pluses and the minuses, this process of study, to a large extent, can decrease the element of doubt. Knowledge doesn't only enhance confidence, it also decreases doubt and skepticism. For example, I, my son Aryan, he's 18, and he's at a point in his life where he's thinking of what to do because he's 18 years old, he's going to be an adult. Even uh, from the academic perspective, he's thinking. Yeah. So all I tell him is, you meet people or join some course, whatever. Like, you know, they have the counseling courses around the world. But a good counselor, I told him, will help you to understand whether you want to, what suits you better. Best, yes. Yeah. So this thing about what suits me best will happen only when I know what is that A option and the B option. So again, I say, uh, Crystal, that getting a thorough knowledge of what you are getting into or you're planning to get into will help you to finally make the decision. And you know, you've touched upon such an important point because self-doubt, if it it, it uh, prevails, it becomes victorious, uh, it leads to failure. Yes. Because in nervousness, you might not make the right decision. <laughs> right. I've, uh, on a, at a personal level, not me, but I've seen a friend of mine um, under the pressure of getting married, under the pressure from his parents, jumped into the marriage mm. without, now I don't mean to say that he should have studied or something, <laughs> but he should have met the person. Right. Uh, he Get should have taken some time to understand the person and for the person to understand him which didn't happen because there was that hurriedness hmm. because he was under the pressure because he found that many of his friends were getting married. Right. So he wanted to be there. Eventually, unfortunately, uh, after two and a half years, uh, they're separated. And now they're trying to do counseling and I believe that counseling helps. But had he done his, uh, you know, he would have taken some time off. That jumping to a decision hmm. and repenting later could have been avoided. Right. Uh, he was in doubt. He told me that. He was in doubt. But the pressure became too much and he he didn't think about uh, how to process that doubt. He just fell into it. Mm. Whether it's a marriage, Crystal, or it's a job, mm. you have two offers. You, kn you knowing the company or you knowing anything, that knowing part will reduce... Uh, the 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 uh, aspect of doubt and increase your conviction, your belief. The more you know, the less you'll have a doubt. Right. I mean, growing up, um, and I, I believe a lot of schools around Fiji, and yeah. then growing up in our schools, we were taught a, a very simple phrase, knowledge is power. Absolutely. And then basically what I've gotten out of this conversation is that best way to overcome your self-doubt is to know about things. So your power comes from knowledge, knowledge of the situation you're about to get and in. And not only that, yes. Crystal, not only me feeling doubtful about my decision, sometimes I may be sure about my decision, but I listen to so many viewpoints that I become doubtful. Right. An external force... The like a perspective, from outside, yes. yeah, that makes me doubtful. So the more I'm sure is only when I know, where I can tell the other person who's probably 
unknowingly putting me in doubt to say i know what i'm doing mm-hmm. you'll have some people who say that i know what i'm doing but you should really know what you're doing right <laughs> because some people just say that and for they, the uh, they for the sake of saying but yeah knowing is uh, what will get us to be less doubtful and more convincing I'm just blown away by these conversations. I'm learning so much. I hope you're learning so much as well. Um we'll jump into the second question that I have for you. Um right before we go into the break. Um what are some practical steps? Easy simple steps that someone can take to build their confidence in say academics or in any social setting. Great. Um uh, the first step to to um getting to know what confidence is and how to build it in yourself is to have a piece of paper not literally a piece a notebook and a pen and the first thing i would say is write down first think of course and write down your short term your medium term and your long term objectives or goals of life because objectification of your life when i say that i'm talking about objectives mm-hmm. setting of objectives or goals creates clarity and that knowledge of where i see myself in the next 1 year or where do i see myself in the next 3 years medium term and where do i see myself in the next 10 years mm-hmm. that clarity and knowledge will help you to first feel a sense of confidence mm-hmm. because if you still are driving the car let me take back to you L- let ferrari. me take you back into your ferrari yes. <laughs> you got the fuel now you got the fuel but if you you're still it. you're still seated in the car yes. i meet you in the evening i'm like hey you got your fuel what happened to you <laughs> why aren't you driving and then if you say mayur my issue is i don't know where to go <laughs> and that also punctures your confidence yeah so despite having the fuel of confidence without direction you your confidence <laughs> isn't so much to ride yeah. drive the car yeah. so you got to have a confluence a coming together of all things the first step therefore is to at least create a visual of where you see yourself short term medium term long, long term also create spheres not with clay or not with uh, <laughs> matte and all in your notepad just put headings like uh you say okay my professional sphere my personal sphere my social sphere my educational sphere and for me i used to put my spiritual sphere mm-hmm. these are spheres in which you can put you can segregate and divide your plans for the future for example educational sphere you say i'm at fnu i'm studying a b c d all right so i intend to pass and come up with at least 75% hmm. for this year i graduate and i want to take up journalism right this is what is clarity this is the second step to confidence hmm. you you put spheres put uh, names to that like i said educational personal spiritual social uh some people don't know where they, what they want to do they hmm. just ape the others right tu kaun chi karta main wohi karta jo that person is yeah. doing that cannot you can't copy such things that's where they lose their confidence and i also think that practice practice of skills uh today uh, i want to say to all the students especially is try to hone your communication skills understand first the role of communication to your success interviews are an example where your communication will be required you need to know that your confidence of having studied and prepared for the interview that is not enough mm. you need to project it Absolutely. through your communication yeah. there's so much that is there for young uh, students across the world mm. to learn about communication but one step at a time so start by maybe watching something on a youtube uh, learn if there are classes happening or if there's something or if you meet somebody who's very good in communication observe and that knowledge of communication also will increase your confidence wow 
the reason i say this is because if they have a doubt the question is where do i resolve the doubt so come yeah. <laughs> put up your questions i had a friend of mine who said uh, mayur i'm in us and there's an it related interview i said good for you so he said i need some tips and this was a chat with him on instagram so i then told him if you're free let's have a zoom call i know him he's a good friend from mumbai but now in us so we had a zoom call where i explained to him the importance of body language wow. the importance of eye contact uh, how do you modulate which some things you can't express in a chat but because of the chat i understood that he needs uh, a zoom call right so that's the reason i'm sharing my uh, instagram account so that they can and connect and we're so with glad me. thank you so much for putting that across to our viewers and our listeners because it's important if you are looking for help um and you need someone to help boost your self confidence you've already gotten um his instagram and linkedin details so please hit him up we'll go for a short break and we'll come back for our final session i wish this didn't end so but we'll be back for our final session where we will talk about how can we maintain our confidence Experience the future at the Fiji National University Open Day 2024. Discover our wide range of programs, meet our dedicated faculty, and explore your career options. From science to arts, technology to health, FNU has something for everyone. From the 3rd to the 5th of October at selected university campuses. Dream it, weave it, and achieve it with FNU. Welcome back. Right before the break, we were talking to Mr. Mayur and we talked about how we can boost our self-confidence, our communication skills, how to set our short-term, mid-term and long-term goals. Now, we're going to talk about how people, not just students, everybody in general who I believe struggles with confidence, how can they maintain their confidence in the most challenging of times? Well, uh this is probably a very very uh, deeply intriguing and required question that you put up because uh, they say achieving success is is fairly tough but maintaining it is probably the tougher part it happens the same applies to us mm. uh, the same applies to our confidence and uh, i have a few answers which have helped me so i'm just sharing it with you the first way by which you can maintain your uh, self confidence you can maintain it and increase it uh, is through a simple method um, where you assess yourself hmm. uh, because there will be wear and tear maintenance of machines for example where they assess the machine and if there is a bit of a crack here and there they'll fix it up remember our vehicles also go for uh, maintenance right mm. so we also need to maintain with a particular uh, technique which in the corporate world is quite fairly known mm. but for youngsters i would say uh, use the same uh, piece of paper or notepad and do something very interesting it's called the swot analysis swot is a is an acronym it's a is a short form s w o and t where s represents your strong points w represents your weaknesses, weaknesses. o are the opportunities that are there for you to identify and threats could be the barriers that could that could stifle your efforts to uh, achieve Achieve your success achieve your goals so when you when you are more clear about or if i can use the same word we used earlier if you can develop the knowledge about who you are by going specifically into your strong areas it will enhance your confidence when you go into the areas which are your weaknesses it will not enhance your confidence but it will make you clear right. on the fact that these are the three or four areas i need to work upon that will enhance your confidence hmm. the swot analysis will lead to clarification of you as a person with respect to what you have as strengths <coughs> sorry what you have as weaknesses which you can work upon what could be the possible opportunities that await you and what could be the possible hurdles that could come in the way mm. 
Mm. This will this is the first way. Second is something that I brought from the Himalayas. I went to the Kailash Mansarovar Himalayas in the year 2001 with my guru Swami Satyajit Shankarasham and I believe that vibrations are very important to maintain your confidence. Wow. You you That's will, something new that I learned. Yes, because music and the vibrations that emanate out of good music will help you to feel a high level of morale you it's a morale booster mm. even so if if, if uh, uh, sorry but like you know mostly we have like our parents and everybody scolding us why are you studying and listening to music at the same time you won't get anything you won't understand me absolutely but I like mean, this could yeah. be one of those i things. have a i have a cousin in uh, pune yeah. india he couldn't study without music and that to not normal music he would listen to metallic But rock loud music, music loud music and my my dad uh, and he uh, so my my he was my cousin he's my cousin my dad would wonder what's going on and he would look at me and said don't you don't do that you know <laughs> but any music that titillates you mm. is beautiful this is one of the most most uh, simple vibrations but has a beautiful tone to it mm. uh, i would like to play that for uh, all of us so you just hold it like this you have a wooden stick and you just do this and when you hit it you close your eyes you close it and try to feel the vibrations i'll do it once again you will feel that this particular vibration moves in waves yes it does and i can hear it right till the end and it's not even that i'm hitting it very hard so this is just a vibration in fact um the person who sold this to me initially in in uh, tibet i didn't want to really pick it up because i was like it's too heavy and stuff but he did this can you hear it yes this vibration is without the hit and this is wood this is metal now i'm not here to do any magic show or trying to shock you uh, crystal and to all the audience members i just want to reiterate and emphasize the beautiful role that a good soothing vibration has how do you maintain your confidence is when a vibration improves or enhances your morale your motivation mm. to life it makes you feel good good it's like a fine tune yeah it it sort of um, energizes you and that is what we need in whatever times that we're going through challenging or non challenging but such things help um a lot of our uh, students people nowadays especially struggle with a lot of mental health issues Correct. like stress depression anxiety um what are some of the tips apart from music and all of these things i would like say i would them? say that's that's again interesting that you asked me because uh youngsters are under tremendous pressure because of the competition and the the technology boom that's happening uh, i would say the first thing is oxygenation oxygenation is a big word yes but <laughs> yes. but but simply speaking we don't really think much about our breathing but breathing actually is what keeps us alive but if you breathe in properly the oxygen quantity and quality is much much better and it uh, it kind of titillates and purifies the organs all the organs including the brain mm -hmm. the nerves function better the organs function better the mind thinks better so what do you do is just sit straight wherever you are even at home just sit keep your spinal cord straight and breathe in through your nose count 4 seconds at least or don't count just breathe in as slowly as possible then hold your breath for 8 seconds or 7 seconds then release your breath through your nose keep your mouth closed and do it as slowly as possible and do this exercise of inhalation retention and exhalation at least 3 to 5 times in a day mm -hmm. seated erect is important your back has to be straight otherwise if you bend and crouch yeah. it hurts your breathing <laughs> yes, that's that's a very simple but a very powerful way to mm. decrease stress 
I think these are very simple tips that we can do at home. We don't have to spend a lot of money running and uh, like looking for even going medicines. for a walk. Mm. Youngsters, I mean, we all have done that. Go and party and meet friends and etc. Ta ta ta. But please find some time every day, if not thrice a week, to go closer to nature. Walk around, meet the trees, say hello to the flowers. It opens up your mind. Yeah. It de-stresses you immediately. Mm. You know, because we we are ground. We it's important that we stay grounded. We stay yeah. connected to nature. See, if you if you are stressed out and if you try to cover it up by just partying and going and meeting your friends, it won't heal your stress. You will just forget about it for some time. You know, if there is uh, something that's emanating a bad smell, and if you spray a perfume on it. It's just like a. It's for just trick. for a some time <laughs> yeah. that the perfume smell will remain. After which, the the bad smell will we'll continue. Come back again. Yes. That's a different example for us. We have to do something which literally decreases our stresses, our worries, our tensions, our anxieties. In fact, deep breathing that I shared with you also helps. Uh, and this is for the older people. I mean, the ones who are probably working, mm. is that it also helps in decreasing anger. Because I've seen that anger, so that little anger management stress classes. creates anger, and anger creates stress. Yes, I like sisters. I know twin <laughs> sisters. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. We've had such an interesting conversation. I wish this could go on forever. But unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. We look forward to having you again um, on the F N U Pulse, and we'll talk about. Um, other things that you are speaking on and self help we we'll also wanted to ask you yeah. mentioned your book sir yes can you please tell us a little bit about the book <laughs> well this is uh, so i uh, you know i love to try and explore different aspects of my personality uh, and we should all do that we should experiment with what we would like to do so writing was one activity that i wanted to try so i started writing poems uh, i started writing a little bit of prose uh, for elocution competitions but it finally happened when i came back from the mountains of himalayas especially kailash mansarovar that i felt like writing about the agori sadhu who i have been as a kid been very intrigued by very interested in so this book really is it's written in a story format uh, about a person called subhu and subhu uh, wants to know more about aghoris mm. so his spiritual mentor sends him to the himalayas to meet the advanced aghori sadhus so it's an adventure uh, seen through the eyes of subhu so a reader gets to see the life of the aghori through, through subhu. subhu and there are it's it's mystical uh, it's uh, very a bit magical but and adventurous and very adventurous i uh, think we, next time <laughs> when you're on the show we'd like to talk about that yes so let's definitely. talk about your book let's talk about the part two of the book as well yes. but we would just like to thank you so much for taking out your time and coming here speaking to us about confidence speaking to us about our goals speaking to us about how we can relieve our stress and how we can maybe help others Absolutely. to relieve their stress as well. So I learned a lot today. I'm I'm hoping you did and uh, did as well. Thank you once again, Mr. Mayur. Please stay tuned to the FNU Pulse for more interesting conversations with interesting people now from across the world. We're not